give me the packet of cigarettes. Oh. <laughs> 18 year old Uni from Brisbane is an expert at either ignoring or abusing her parents. Uni is extremely volatile and very, very belligerent. I'm there as their guest so they can do what I say. I reckon it'd be pretty bad, my baby, towards my parents, but like towards other people, I'll be happy. Her parents hope a week overseas with a strict family will knock some sense into her. Uni needs to learn to take some responsibility for her own actions and to realise that in life she can't just be given everything that she wants. Our biggest fear is that she'll never get out of the hole she's in. You know, She'll never stop smoking dope or screaming and ranting and raving. The family overseas, I don't reckon I'll listen to them at all. Fun is getting high with my friends. <laughs> I smoke it pretty much every single day. Get on, smoke some weed, get high. We adopted her when she was five months old. She was a really lovely child, but she was always prone to tantrums. You just spoke to me about two seconds ago, Mum. When she wants something, she wants it immediately. Dad, you already said you were driving me, so you are. Sorry. When I fight my parents, I smash everything in the house. I smash windows, I break chairs. There's a hole in the door, there's a hole in the floor. It's real in-your-face bullying. My parents treat me mean, they don't give me money when I want it. Can I please have some more money? No, you can't have any more. $60 isn't enough for me. She's been caught shoplifting several times. She takes anything that she wants, iPods, phones, money, and I've sold a credit card off at my mum before. She's got parents who love her, she's got a nice place to live. Really, everything that she wants could become hers. But she, it doesn't work for her. Well, you're in their house, so you've got to live by oh, their rules. That's what they're, they're not going to treat me the right way. I'm not going to treat them the right way. Her travelling companion is 16-year-old Sam. A drama queen with a bad attitude. So you've got everything? Yes, I've got everything. If Sam doesn't get what he wants, his home becomes a battlefield. We've argued in the last nine, ten months, you know, constantly argued. She'll go on and on until the point where I have to snap and I don't want to hear it. I feel that he does bully me and he can be verbally abusive. When it comes to people telling me not to do what I want to do, then that's when I get a little bit, you know, out of control. It's just got to the stage now where I just can't do it anymore with him. If he's going to live as part of the family unit, then he's got to go by the rules. I will do things my own way, yeah. Like, I'll do what I want. <laughs> I'm rebellious. I'm a very loud person. This party is amazing! <laughs> My idea of fun is just going out with friends, chilling, doing what we want to do. If people don't accept my sexuality, then I will just tell them to. I know he's sexually active and I know he doesn't use protection. I've tried to talk to him, but he thinks he's indestructible. I can choose if I'm gonna leave the house at 12 at night. I can choose if I'm gonna smoke. I can choose if I'm gonna drink. Whoa, what? You know, I'm a, I'm a mature person and I can do what I like. Most days when I'm coming home from work, it's like um, walking on eggshells. If you're gonna get in the way, you just go downstairs to your room and... Yeah, I'll go downstairs to my room, Sam. So. I get so angry with my mum that I have to smash things when she doesn't listen to me. I you have some respect for me. And she I feels really? like, oh, really unsafe, so she has to call the police. I was using your credit card, so what? No, you just don't. Don't you get it? You That's stealing. You your credit I know card. he's 16, he... but he's got to learn consequences. While shooting this story, the family hit a major hurdle. Three weeks ago, I suffered what we call a mild heart attack. So Sam was moved to Sydney temporarily to live with his father. He's shown very little concern. It's not my responsibility to look after her because I have my own things to worry about. I have faith that my beautiful son will return one day. I do care, but then again, there's that little bit of me that says, oh, I don't. Have a good time. Look after yourself, yeah. OK? Make the most of it. The teens are heading to the beautiful Caribbean island of Trinidad and the suburb of Laventille. 
a melting pot of race and religion. They'll be living with the family, who are of Indian descent. Dad Omar runs the family hardware business. Mum Kumari is office manager at the store. Their children, Andrea, Amanda and Aaron are still students. Omar's mum, Rita, completes the family that has a no-frills approach to parenting. The key to bringing up children is that they need to be disciplined. Who turn it is to do the dishes? The tightness. Who's going to do it? So we had devised a method of counting from one to three. Who didn't make the bed? One, two. From the time you reach three, it is guaranteed that you will get a lash. You can't say, I don't want to wash it, I don't feel like it. You have to do yeah. it, because it's your thing to do. Amanda, did you finish with the washing? I'm doing it now, Mom. What are you waiting on? And it has to be done properly, or else. Our faith has been, I think, the most important thing in keeping us together. Family that worships together stays together. They have to understand that we are their best friends, but we could be their worst nightmares. How are you getting through there? Um, I'm almost finished. Almost OK, finished. well, you need to hurry up. Never mistake my sweetness for my weakness. Where's all the beaches at? Yeah, I know. We'll find them. Our teens are actually heading away from the Caribbean surf. But Sam and Uni's sense of direction is all over the place. Feels like we're in Africa. I'm so tired, I don't know where I am. Are you excited, Uni? Yeah, they offered me bong. It's nearly 48 hours since her last hit of marijuana, and Uni has just one thought on her mind. Imagine if a deal lived next door to this family's house. We'd be over there, like, every day. Laventille is not exactly a key Caribbean holiday destination. It's one of Trinidad's poorest neighbourhoods and is notorious for its high crime rate. Oh my God, they've got barbed wire on their fence. This is nothing like what I expected. Yeah, I know. We're screwed. As the teens enter the family compound, reality hits hard. Look at the hole. Oh, I'm refusing to stay here. I want to home. Look at these parents. The mum looks so oh scary. My God. There's like. This is, nah, this is screwed in the head. I'm not staying here. I want to go home. Hello. Hi. Hi. Holy moly. <laughs> Sam and Uni are reeling, and both teens are desperate for a cigarette. We don't allow smoking. So that's definitely a no, no, no smoking. Let's go outside. <laughs> I'm not saying it. Uni. The thing is, it's not safe outside. It's not like you can walk about here. It's all right. It's all right. We, I know, we, we can defend ourselves. Oh, you might be able to defend yourself, but not from We're five people. meters from the house. Yeah, yeah. This is you not the way like we a... do things here, OK? You you're control? not letting us not smoke. I'm sorry, we but smoke, we're smoking. Though. No, you're not going to smoke. You're going to finish no, that, but you're no, not going to smoke. I am going to smoke. No, I'm you sorry. are not going to smoke. No, no. I am. That's uh, a no, no. no. I'm going to smoke, right? No, you are no, not going to smoke. Yes, I'm going to smoke. This behavior is totally unacceptable. I have never experienced anything like it. Yeah, I, I haven't finished right. it. If you ask to finish it, we let you finish it. This is unbelievable. I don't want to stay here. This is really <laughs> Kumari decides she needs to show these teens exactly who's boss. OK. OK. She's going not as I planned. Yeah. With everybody on edge, the decide to take control. Guys, there's a few quick rules that we have. You need to treat each person respectfully. And we yeah, but it's saying so we have to get respect back. You need to earn that respect. Your chores will be very simple things. Doing the dishes. Excuse me? I don't listen to my parents at home when they tell me to do chores, so I don't think I'm going to listen to you. Tony and Sam are more used to giving orders than taking them. Once you do not follow those rules, you are given punishment. I haven't been punished in three years, so what makes you think punishment's going to work on me? <laughs> Unless you can actually physically chain me to a chair and say, uh, restrain yourself. Yeah. But you can't. It's not going to work. Definitely no cursing. Our children don't curse. Wow. We don't curse at our children. Cursing is not part of our vocabulary. Sometimes it just comes out. Sometimes we can't really control ourselves, so. Mm. No smoking, no drinking, no drugs. I don't drink. Right. Well, that's good. good. Good for you. Yeah. I do the drugs. Smoking. Well, why would you do drugs? Would it, would, does it make you feel good? Well, the, well, that's why people take drugs. No, that's not why people take drugs. They take drugs because they have mental problems. 
It's no, a vice. It's, it's a vice. A it's hold a vice. on. Can we just stop yeah. talking about yeah. drugs? Let's just okay. stop talking about drugs. Because I really, I would really like a cone right now. Oh. <laughs> There's an ocean of difference between these teens and their new family, and it's not going to be easy to navigate. I'm, not, I'm talking like an adult, not a, not a six-year-old. Okay. Let's go, Sam. All right. There we go again. No, there you go again. Sorry. Oh, over you. <laughs> it's crap. What they can throw at us, we can't handle. They just seem to be misguided, and I think we can sort them out. I think I need some extra heel merits. <laughs> Seriously. This family is rules. I'm really, really pissed off because you can't do jack. You can't do anything around this house without getting in trouble. Sam's right. Their quick cigarette leads to an immediate bag search. You mess any of that up whatsoever, and I will go off my tits. You are saying you would be respectful. Yeah, you went exactly. to smoke. So you, you betrayed your own trust. I'm having my own time. OK. Let go. Let go. Let it go. I said let it go. Let go. I said let I feel like I'm in a, a parallel universe to everybody else. I mean, if my friends would have seen me now, I was like, Kumari, what did you get yourself into? We're really not yeah. your kids. Let go of his Look it, and I have the key. I'm going to throw the key away. They're feeling insecure. They're feeling threatened. But we are clear and understanding that OK, they need help, and if somebody don't help them, they're going to eventually harm themselves. You are, you are pointing showing... your finger at me! I've never had that kind of behavior, that kind of, I mean, I would use the word hatred, thrown at me. So I'm feeling emotionally strained, I'm feeling broken. Within hours of the teens arriving, the entire household is in meltdown. They are literally... I can't deal with people telling me what to do. I want to go home. Oh. If I have to put up with this, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. You cause this upon yourselves by sitting at this table, having a go at us and trying to get answers out of us. It doesn't work. Hello, we didn't bring you from Australia for this reason, you know. You came here because you have a problem. But strict parents Kumari and Omar are not intimidated. They are custom manipulating everybody they deal with. So they are looking for kinks in your armor. They have pushed us to the absolute max. They're going to be trouble, trouble, trouble. They're going to have a tough time. They're going to have a ride. Yeah. This whole family is screwed in the head. We can't do anything. Sam and Uni's biggest fear is that their cigarettes will be confiscated. But if they have one great talent, it's hiding things from parents. Behind the clock, behind the clock. What's for dinner? Della would like to thank you for having Sam and Uni. We pray that we may all get along well and we may all see each other's point of views and perspectives. As we say in Australia, 2468, bog in, don't wait. Maybe hoping for a ceasefire, but the culture clash continues. We're having dinner, we have to eat with our hands. It's an Indian thing. Oh, I don't want to eat with my hands, that's disgusting. Oh, God. <laughs> It's really spicy, huh? Oh, it's hot. Oh, my giddy aunt. <laughs> oh, I feel sick. If they probably try a little bit harder, it might just be a little bit easier on everybody. Because, I mean, it's not just hard on them. Oh, they're just doing the dishes while I'm touching up. We have to step up. Right now, they feel that they are smart and we are silly. Where's the teacups? Is that OK if I have a tea and a cigarette on the deck or out down the... No, you keep forgetting you said no cigarettes. Sam still seems to believe he can control these new parents. This is my routine. I do it every night. No, that has... Uh, this is my... Uh, Omar. If she tips my tea out, I'm going to be f doing it. I slap her. No, no, sweetheart. You already can't have... I'm cigarette. going down the bottom. No, that... It has... One a, cigarette. No. It's not a problem. He's about to learn he's not the one in control. I said no. Sorry, you can't walk don't in front touch of me. don't touch I'm me. I'm not touching Do you. Do not touch me. You are in my space. <laughs> where you think it where you think you're my god? Get off his arm! To be joking. This is like imprisonment. This is stupid. No. I'll jump out the window then. Well you break a leg. 
I am craving weed right now so badly. Since I haven't gone a day for so long without it. So I think that's why I've been getting all worked up today and breaking down in tears. Let me out! We don't even lock our gates. I mean, we did it because of the way they were carrying exactly. on. Exactly, we have never locked them. We our have gates. no desire to lock them in. No, but Uni and Sam are determined to shut the family out. You are not allowed. Or I will smash your head in. Oh, God! Ow! Oh, you smashed? Ow! 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 You the are horrified that Uni could be seriously hurt. Should we take you to the hospital? I'm perfectly fine. It didn't even hit my shoulder. I only cried to make them feel bad because they're bloody pain in the necks. When they realise she's been play acting, the gloves are off. Listen, she isn't your sweetheart. Uh, she does. She does. I don't care. Very, very, don't very, get very careful. Face. I will get you in your face if I want to. You do not come in well, my then, house. Well, then brush it is hurtful to me. That's this little boy, the way he's, I mean, calling me. Hello. You've got something wrong in your head, and so does oh, your Oh, I husband. have something wrong. No, you've yeah. got something wrong yeah, in your head. Yeah, he does. It is hurting, and I am hurt. I am very hurt. Sam and Uni have vowed not to be separated, even to sleep. Done. And this time, successfully locked the parents out. We are busy. Omar's elderly mother is very disturbed by the teen's insolence. Even though we had the key, we decided not to go in because this would probably make the situation more volatile. Ah, the parents, they're complete. They are utter, unnegotiable people. We'd probably take it with them tomorrow. So you all can go ahead and sleep now. The kids, I reckon, are brainwashed because they're just doing exactly what their parents tell them without any hesitation, which I find pretty weird. I'm thinking of I want to go home right now because I'm over the already. Someone else in the home has also had enough. Hi, Mom. I mean, I'm so mad my mother-in-law is, is leaving, and to make an 82-year-old woman leave the comfort of her bed because she's afraid. I mean, she's scared, and she's also scared for us. I don't really care about the grandma leaving because she never really spoke to us, and she's not our grandma. She just sits in the back room on a little couch doing nothing. She is a worming, squirming pile of vomit. After such a disturbing first day, the parents have decided to let the teens stay together. Boy, these parents are so They've given up on the first night. But Omar has a clear plan for tomorrow. It has become apparent to me that they're using their behaviour as a bargaining chip. They think that if they behave badly, we give them what they want. So we have to do the opposite of that. You behave badly, you get treated badly. We want to be able to help them. It's still my hope that, that we could do that. But after tonight, I'm like, whoa, I you know, I, I don't know. I just have to wait and see what tomorrow brings. That's it. It's 6 a.m. Seems to be a very strong sleep. A time our teens are more used to going to bed than waking up. Good morning. What the f you are just okay, I'm getting a Omar decides he's had enough and it's time to bring out his secret weapon. We have been nice to you since you come here. Right? You need to um, spit on you. Huh? That's, you can go ahead and spit all you like I have a bucket of water. Stop the oh cursing. My god. Right? Oh my god. You need to stop the cursing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, that's powerful. That's powerful. Okay. When they finally do get up. Sam and Uni's first thought is to have a cigarette. You have to keep looking at ways of enforcing your authority without going overboard or extreme. Omar is determined that today these teens will follow his rules, including no smoking. My cigarette just fell out. No smoking. Don't need to come out. That says I need to have about this, okay? Suck my life, ten. You are smirking. No, we're just talking. If you would like, I will also be moving, removing the door from the bathroom. If I come back here and you all are not out. I'm in the toilet. Sorry. Other than that, I will call the police. 
Uni's police record means this is a serious threat. If I fucking call the police, I'm leaving. She could end up in a foreign jail. OK. I feel like you can't read. When you Kumari feel like is allergic to cigarette smoke. No? Well, that's what you're doing to me right now. Your cigarettes are affecting my sinus. I can't breathe. Then go outside. No, no, no I, I can't. Well, so this is my house. Why should but I But the team seem allergic no, no. to telling the truth. We're sorry. You all lied. Okay. You lied. You lied. Nah. We did We're not used to this. We're okay. not used to right getting now. bossed around 24 7. I'm not going to sit at the table and listen to their kind of back chat and, and the things that Sam is going on with. I'm very sorry that we can't abide with what you think we you should You can't do. turn a blind eye because... No. Yeah. Kumari believes no. the constant onslaught of swearing no. is verbal assault. You can't control what I say. You can't. I've never had anybody curse me like that. I am so, so mad right now. And I've decided I am not going to cook because of the behavior, and I think peanut butter and jelly is food that you're not gonna starve, and they can make that themselves. Can we have breakfast? No. So you need to eat. You can't stop someone from eating. They're not feeding us properly. They're not giving us cutlery. I'm going to push these parents over the limit. The emotional turbulence is high, so Omar has a plan to defuse the teens. We would like you all to have a little bit of free time from one another. A mark of respect for the disobedience yesterday. We need you to fill out two bags of gravel. You are going across with me to the store. We package screws and stuff. I'm like not that. a child slave. Uni is used to handling bags of marijuana, not bags of gravel. Are you literally kidding me? At this rate, she'll be here until nightfall. Can I stop now? Oh. Hi, Kumari. Omar's father started the family hardware business 40 years ago. There is everywhere. God, I'm working in a scrapyard. What am I going to see and learn from counting? From counting, yeah. We learn patience, we learn tolerance. These simple things. Wow. Are... Yeah. Omar's assistant, Felix, is overseeing Sam count screws into piles of 25. Do I put these in the other bags? It's a simple job. Sam is making very complicated. What? So I just count them in 25s and put them in a bag? Put them all in the bag? I just took them out of the bag. Do I need another bag? I just took them out of the bag and he wants me to just count 25s and then put them back in the bag. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. It's gonna work. Where's Omar? Uni's complaining just as much. It's not even the halfway full yet. But at least she's having a go. It makes an annoying sound though. <laughs> so you're almost done. Yeah, what the I do? Okay. You're cursing you, again. Yeah, I don't care. Could you count up to 100? Probably not. Yes, I am drug fucked. Ah, okay. Under Trinidad law, it's illegal to use profanity to the annoyance of any person or persons. Whether you're in public or at your home. Counting nails. We are dealing with the laws according to Trinidad and Tobago, not Australia, not wherever. We have to deal with our laws. Uh, Why are the police here? Yeah. For Kamari, Sam's relentless swearing has crossed the line, and they've called the police to give him an official warning. It is not an offence where you are from. No. However, here it is. Once you use obscene language, annoying language, insultive language, So violent. you call the police about it? This gentleman keeps the peace. He keeps the peace. We have customers that He's will... standing here with a gun. I was advised to lodge a report. Apparently, him and it can't cope. Hey, man. It. Yeah, he keeps screaming, my wife was it. I really don't care. Well, at some point, you're going to have to start caring, so... I've come to the decision if they continue to curse or swear at me, at my husband, I am going to press charges, definitely going to press charges. The seriousness of his situation is starting to dawn on Sam. Why are the police here? Why? It doesn't make sense. I told him, 
I'm not counting nails. I you understand. haven't listened to a word. We have listened to everything. No, yeah, listened. and you haven't taken it in. Yeah. You've just, it's just gone right through your thick head. The listened. profanity, if it doesn't stop, it will be serious okay. consequences. Yeah. If charged, Sam will be taken to prison. Yeah, anything. I understand that. This is one situation he cannot control. I want to f Oh. No, I don't want to be here. I am really, really mad. I'm still mad about it. I am not going to put up with it. If the police are called again, our teens will be charged with verbal assault and they will end up in jail. Where are you all trying? Where you all are not trying. I will give you respect if you give me respect. She hasn't given respect, so I'm going to go tell her to herself after this cigarette. With Sam outside, the take the opportunity to tackle Oni alone. He is using you to fight his battle. That's what he's, he's doing. He's not using me. He's he does. Using he's using you. I, I do stand up for myself, though. And when Sam raises his voice, when you tend to get agitated, but, I mean, look at you now. He's gone and you're, like, calm. It's not what Uni wants to hear, but they have hit a nerve. I'm just choosing not to argue with Omar and Kamari because I just want to cope with this and I just want to make the week go faster. Can you come with me? Mum's in Yep. The next morning... Kumari decides she can no longer cope with the teens. I told my husband, I said, look, son, this is your thing. You're going to deal with it because I was so upset. I couldn't really think. I'm like, I, I was so hurt. I, I couldn't think straight. So one of the instructors agreed to do a class outdoors. To give Kumari a break, Omar has a plan to get these teens moving and towing the line. I love sports. I hate it. Hold on, let me start my watch and see what we can do. Uni actually seems to be enjoying herself. Come on, come on. I'm really proud of you. But as usual, Sam is resisting. I'm just tired. I'm just being honest. I'm saying I'm tired. I'm jet lagged. That family won't feed me. It's like a dog when they're naughty. They don't feed you. And even Uni is starting to tire of Sam's constant whinging. Just chill out. This is good for you. He's finding it difficult to cooperate. I'm not trying to be mean to him. Like, I'm only helping him as a friend. What? Yeah, blisters. So when people seem to push him, he gets really angry. And, like, he just gets worked up about it. And then that just causes fights. There's no stopping. It's all pushing all the way. Sometimes he thinks it's not as bad as we, as we think it is. You see? There you go. Different, isn't it? Very different to what you know. Uni can be the catalyst for change in that she's more receptive. She can get Sam to toe the line a bit. I always say in every person, there's a measure of good. After such a difficult start to the trip, Uni's now striding ahead. I haven't had any marijuana while I've been away. The first couple of days were very stressing and depressing for me. Like, I got really upset easily over nothing, just worked myself up. I'm feeling just like a lot more happier, like I don't need weed to make me happy. Being drug free but high on exercise has jolted Uni into a whole new awareness. And she decides to apologise to Kumari. Well, I'm sorry for my behaviour and the way I've treated you over the past couple of days. So I've At last, this pair is really communicating and Kumari shares why she hates cigarettes. They killed her father. I've never seen my father sick. And then at 48, bam, that was it. He just came home one day and said, I'm, I'm not feeling so well. And by the time he reached the doctor, that was it. I'm sorry. If this would take me being really, really mad and really upset, I would sacrifice my feelings if at the end it is going to bring out something better in them. You don't have to tell me what to do. Okay, but, but you see, I, don't have to tell, I worked in a hair salon for a year. I know. But outside, Omar is still battling it's with Sam. Cleaner. <laughs> it's, it's clean. The back there is not clean. The back, no. Yeah, yeah. You can do it then. Do it yourself. Oh, yeah, do it yourself. <laughs> I've gotten off my ass. I'm cleaning. I'm actually cleaning. Oh. Uni. But relations with Uni are completely this different. Kamari believes she now deserves a letter from her parents. Do you mind staying with me? Sure. 
Do you, Uni? When we wave goodbye, I can't believe it. Dear Uni, when we wave goodbye to you at the airport, you look very smart and confident. And I thought, there is a girl who has a bright future, if only she would realize it. I know that you have a lot of ability and that deep down you are a really nice and lovable person. When you shout at us or call us insulting names, it makes us feel very sad. We try to talk to you and you tell us to shut up, when all we're trying to do is to, to help, help you and to find out, out how you are feeling. Do you read it now? You're good to read it now? Sure. When we adopted you as a baby, we were so happy to have you as part of our own family. We loved you from the first moment we saw you, being carried on your Korean foster mother's back. In the streets of Seoul. You were such a loving and affectionate little girl. We'd love to have that old one back. You know that we love you and we'll give you all the, the help you need. Love mum and dad. <laughs> Thank you. You're most welcome. I used to always do everything with my mum and dad. We don't get along at all. We love her and we just want what's best for her. None of us can continue living like this because I don't think that she could possibly be happy living like she's living. Just reading it made me realise that what I'm doing is hurting them so much. I would just like to tell them that I'm so sorry for the way I've been acting and I've realised that what I'm doing is hurting them so much and that I'm just willing to be prepared to just change and go back to the old Woody. Because <laughs> I miss them so much. Uni has made huge steps. Now I don't need to be told how to do it because I know how to mop stairs. But Sam's another story. All you need to do is shut your mouth. No matter how you do it, even if you weren't looking, the stairs will be spotless. But what the we're about to find out is he's hiding a deep, painful secret. Very good. But strict dad Omar is determined to help this troubled teen. This would have happened if you cleaned up the dog crap. Right. Sam, you just need to have a little patience when you're doing stuff. Yeah. You know, it, All right. I know it's it, okay. it, you want to get through with it, but yeah. just a little patience. There's a child in there, and he's a, just a young child. He doesn't know the way forward. Somebody has to come in there and help him come out. Omar hopes a trip to the slums of Laventille might open Sam's eyes. Hurry up. And hopefully reveal a softer side. If you have a family living across here that has lost their jobs, you find the owners of the property would come and remove the roof and break the walls and evict them. Oh no, that's sad. For once, something seems to have broken through Sam's angry defences, and Omar believes Sam's been masking his feelings for far too long. When he puts on makeup, he's hiding inside himself. He's covering himself up because he, he feels vulnerable. Makeup covers my face pretty much because I'm not happy with my self appearance, so that's why I choose to wear it. And yeah, I get a lot of self confidence out of it. When I look at a person and I see makeup, I say, oh, okay, they have something that they're hiding. And usually, the more makeup I see, I say, wow, they have so much of themselves that they need to hide. I don't want to go there about people. Yeah. I've been through the argument about wearing makeup and yeah. why you shouldn't. It's, listen, it's my choice. I'll choose to wear makeup. No one can stop me from putting it on my face. The discussion about makeup has brought back some painful memories for Sam. High school was a load of rubbish because I got bullied for no reason. And it gets me really angry because people just don't understand. I have anxiety towards what people think, so I do everything possible to make myself absolutely perfect. And even when I do, it doesn't work. It just... And people rub it back in your face. What he received from other people, it may be bad things, may, they find him different, they find him difficult, or whatever it is. He has to look inside himself and see if he finds... if he can live with himself. Then he can accept himself. Having shared a long-held secret of not feeling good enough, 
Sam makes a massive decision. I haven't seen myself without makeup for two years because I go to bed with it, I wake up with it, I put it on before I go to bed. Behind all the makeup, you know, it's still me. I'm still the same funny person. I know different. This is a huge step because I've just taken it all off and had to stand in the mirror for five minutes and look at my own face. It will take time and love for Sam to feel totally comfortable in his own skin. It's long. And it's his mum he'll need the most. Hi, Sam. I hope by the time you have received this letter, you are settled in well with your new family. I miss you, Sammy. Your absence around... Your absence around the home has affected me more than I thought it would. The house is so quiet now that you're not around. You don't want to read it. I don't think you appreciate how hard it is for me as your mother to say this. If things don't change, you cannot live with us anymore. It tears me apart. I desperately want us to stay together, but, but that can only happen if we see real change in your attitude to life with the family. All my love and missing you. Mum. I'd tell her when I get back that I'd appreciate her a lot more and thank you for everything you've done to help me. Still putting food on the table and washing my clothes when, you know, you haven't had time or money and just little things like that that I haven't ever appreciated that I now do. I've observed a drastic change in him. I have observed Sam stripping off his, himself, his old self, and coming out of that. And I can only hope and we will pray for him that he has the strength to continue. They need to love themselves. Because if you love yourself, you really wouldn't want to hurt yourself. Because they are beautiful people, they are beautiful children, and they need someone to, to tell them they need to be true to themselves. It's taken a full week, but Sam and Uni have both come to new levels of self-understanding. In celebration, the whole family is spending the day on the neighbouring island of Tobago. It's the perfect way to end the week. But will the strong family lessons learnt in Trinidad survive the journey home? It's the final day in Trinidad. And for both the Bay Shoes and our teens, the emotions are bittersweet. Will you miss us? Yes, we will. Bye, Mama. Bye. I found uni to be a very soft, very kind person. Hi, Hi Rachel Weather. She understands that you don't need substances to help you get through the day. I'm glad I lived with this family because I don't think I would have changed without the advice they gave me. And we really want for you to be happy. Thank you so much. The Sam of today is a very different guy to the Sam that came here a week ago. I look back and I think, I wish I'd never done all those things I did on the first two days. I'm 100% responsible for every one of the choices I make. You know, if I stuff up, then I have to suffer the consequences, which I've realised. We're going to miss you all. We'll miss you all. We're going to miss yeah. you all too. Bye. Bye. Help the change in me, so I'm very thankful. I am proud to say to all my friends in Australia, that I have a beautiful and loving second family in Trinidad. I'm gonna miss them so much. That is lovely. Well, you have to keep this. Yes. We made a difference. difference. Mm -hmm. So this one is from Sam. This is from Sam. I cannot thank you enough for having me stay at your house and for showing me the things you have. I have learned so much on this amazing trip about family, happiness, and finding who I really am as a person. This child is so awesome. He is awesome. 
It actually felt like I was part of their family. I know, I saw that. The rain's crying with me. Trinidad's sad that we're leaving. I'm really excited about getting home. I can't wait to see my mum. Until last night, I wasn't too sure. I had mixed feelings, but I'm actually feeling really excited about Sam coming home today. The trips made me realise that I've been very um, selfish and rude towards her, so I'm hoping to get off to a good new start. Sam! I missed you. It felt really good to hug my mum because I haven't seen her in ages and, yeah, I missed her heaps. Samson! Oh, the house is so quiet without you. <laughs> I guess it's just up to me to, you know, show her that I do respect her and show her that I love her. I plan to do that by just doing things like not raising your voice, talk things over and just, yeah, things like that. I'm sorry about the behaviour that happened in the last year or two. I love you. I love you too. I think he has changed. I can see it in his eyes. I am very excited about the future. Um, getting a job, earning money, buying my own things. I'm just excited about us being together as a family in, in the future. And I'm ecstatic, yeah. I'm really pleased. It feels so good to come home, actually. Because I've missed it a lot and I've missed my family. The first thing I'm going to say to my parents will be that I've missed them. We have missed her. What time should you in? It's half past 11, I think. I'm hopeful there might be some changes. We're hoping a nicer person will walk through the door, but time will tell. I'm looking forward to having, having her back. <laughs> it's good to be home. It's good to have you home. And I'm sorry for the way I've treated you. Yeah, I actually do reckon it's the start of a new one. I'm going to start afresh, like just get my life back on track with my makeup course and just like getting along better with my family. The trip sounds like it's had an effect on her. It sounds like she was moved by it. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing happened. I'm glad that I did go on the trip because it was such a good experience. It made me realise just to be happy with what I have. The uni that we've just seen now is different to what, from what we've seen for quite a long time. So I'm hoping that um, she stays. It'd be great.